sitting in his aura and learning like we were in our undergraduate days in classrooms. Um, from this high profile talk, it will be a step down for me to talk about a clinical entity of non-erosive reflux disease. Before we go into that, initially in fact, uh, Dr. Nitesh Pratap had asked me to speak on therapeutic advances and when both of us realized that there weren't any, we shifted to non-erosive reflux disease as an entity for discussion. Before we go into NERD, a few words about GERD. Some of us who are not deep into motility will start to wonder, don't these esophageal physiologists have any other work to do? We keep defining and redefining conditions to make it more easy for us to understand and and in the process go back to where we all had our common sense. So GERD by definition with a highly educated group says that it is a condition that develops when reflux of gastric contents causes troublesome symptoms or complications. That's the first thing we learn in medical school, that if contents went from here to there, that's reflux. But it took the high profile committee to finally tell us that that is what is reflux. But I want you to pay attention to just two things here, that reflux is different from reflux disease. And when the patient has symptoms and complications and or complications, we call that reflux disease, which means essentially reflux is a physiological process, but when there are symptoms or complications associated, it becomes a pathological process. Two groups in this, those who have esophageal damage simultaneously and those who do not have esophageal damage, again, common sense. But here I want you to focus on one thing, that now we say mucosal damage, that is erosive esophagitis, or Barrett's esophagus and NERD or ENRD is the one without mucosal damage. But now we say that what we define as mucosal damage should, erode, should include erosions or break in the mucosa and not just inflammation. Till about five years back, we talked about inflammation as a manifestation of GERD, cause confusion because the contrast on our endoscope would vary from pink to orange to red and your inflammation would be normal for my endoscope. So now we know that we need mucosal ruptures or mucosal breaks before we can define these as damage to the esophagus. So here we have grade A to grade D esophagitis. Most of us know about what this is. But just for clarification, grade A is when you have lesions less than 5 millimeters. Grade B, the length increases. Grade C, it crosses the ridges. And grade D, it goes right across the mucosa. So we now have erosions that are easily identifiable by even a beginner endoscopist. That makes it easier for us to say what is GERD and what is a subset of NERD or non-erosive, as the term is so clear, non-erosive reflux disease. So the very consensus group, which probably was the first consensus group to meet internationally to define what is NERD. And they said that this is a subcategory of GERD that is characterized naturally by troublesome reflux symptoms and said that this should be due to intraesophageal acid. I'll come to this a little later. In the absence of esophageal mucosal erosions or breaks. So this is where the importance of defining GERD is that now we're saying NERD can include what looks like inflammation to you, but should exclude mucosal breaks, conventional endoscopy, and without recent acid suppressive therapy. So the focus is once again on absence of esophageal mucosal breaks or erosions. NERD was earlier divided into three types, type 1, 2, 3, you can see the difference between them. Symptoms have to be typical before we say that this patient has reflux, but acid exposure was said to be abnormal in only type 1. That means the others probably had normal acid exposure, but still had typical symptoms, which means they had an esophagus that was overreacting to normal acid. So these patients were then classified as having a hypertensive, so hypersensitive esophagus. That means normal acid exposure, but they still have symptoms versus abnormal acid exposure in type 1. Type 3 were patients who had typical symptoms, normal acid exposure, had no correlation on pH studies of symptoms with the acid exposure, and some of them would respond to PPI. The others would not respond to PPI. So we have patients with symptoms, normal acid exposure, no correlation between acid exposure and the symptoms, 
some would respond to PPIs, some would not respond to PPIs.